So now we have your local first data storage in the browser, perhaps running a PostgreSQL instance together with PG Lite. But your beloved users come knocking on your door. They want their data on their desktop, on their phone, and perhaps even on granny's old laptop. And what they're asking for is synchronization. And that, my friend, is a different beast to tame. But what if I could tell you that some smart guys already have most of it figured out? And that's what the awesome guys over at Electric SQL are trying to do. Electric SQL is a sync engine for PostgreSQL, which takes your PostgreSQL database and synchronizes it to multiple clients. Whenever data is created, updated or deleted, your clients will be the first to know about it. But keep in mind that this is a read path engine. So the data goes from PostgreSQL down to your clients, but there is no built in write path. How you handle writes is completely up to you. And this is most likely where you want to have an intermediary proxy server where you handle the writing, the authentication and similar things. It also has a HTTP API. This is also what powers the TypeScript client under the hood. So you can use the TypeScript client to run Electric SQL in the browser. So how does Electric SQL work under the hood? Here is a high level overview. Instead of taking your fat five megabyte database of cat images and just dropping it on your clients, Electric SQL instead uses a subset of your data in what they call shapes. And these shapes are tied to a specific table. So when your to do's table changes, for example, you will get notified about it. You might also provide where clauses here to filter out data based on some interesting columns that you have. And this is a streaming API. So Electric SQL will continuously send down updates to your client. But the first time that your client connects to Electric SQL, we actually set the offset here to be minus one. And that will give the client all of the data that is stored in the table. But for subsequent requests, the offset will be changed so that the client doesn't have to get data that it already knows about. So let's go ahead and get up and running with Electric SQL. The easiest way to run Electric SQL is together with Docker. If you don't already have Docker and Docker Compose installed, you can find it on the Docker website. Electric SQL provides a small Docker Compose file which sets up the Postgres server and the Electric server. So you can find this to be downloaded on their website or you can pull it down with curl into the current directory. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now that we have that docker compose file, we can just run docker compose up and it will set up the Postgres server and the electric SQL server. So let's go ahead and try out the TypeScript client. I'm currently running a project here in Vite with Svelte, but you could be using any framework whatsoever. Let's go ahead and install the TypeScript client for electric SQL. So we just have electric SQL slash client. So since we have electric SQL running on port 3000, we can connect to it like this. We can create a new shape stream where you connect to localhost 3000 slash v1 slash shape. So if I go ahead and connect to my local Postgres instance, which is defined here, you can see the, the username and password we should be able to get into that. Then we can create this scores table so that it will be defined for us. We can also go ahead and insert some data into this table. So now we want to subscribe to this shape stream so that any updates that we get to the database will also be displayed in the browser. And we can do that by creating a new shape that takes in this shape stream. And then we can subscribe to it with shape.subscribe, get back a callback whenever the data has changed and we will just log it out, print it out to the console. If we then go ahead and open our app in the browser and take a look inside of the console, we can see that we now have all of these rows showing up. They have also been deserialized into proper JavaScript objects. What is interesting is if we now try to insert a new score into the table. So let's go ahead and execute this insert statement. And boom, once you look at that, it was almost instant. We can see that we now get back another value with this test value added. Of course, we could also delete Charlie. You can see that we get back another array that does not contain Charlie anymore. 
We can of course also use some reactivity with Svelte here. So whenever we get back an update from the shape stream, we just reset our scores state and it will be rendered in the client. We can also set a where clause in our shape stream. So we will only get back scores which are greater than two. In the last video, we looked at PG Lite for embedding a PostgreSQL instance directly in the browser with WebAssembly. And this was made by the same guys who created Electric SQL. So of course they will have first class support for PG Lite as well. So here we can synchronize our backend PostgreSQL database into a locally running PG Lite instance in the browser. So in order to do that, we can install the Electric SQL PG Lite sync library. Then we create a PG Lite instance just like before, but in this case we send in the Electric sync extension when we create it. And then of course we also need to create the tables locally. So if I have a table called scores in my remote Postgres instance, then I want to have that locally as well. So we create that table if it doesn't exist. And then we can run the function sync shape to table. So this will synchronize our shape. It will set up a, a persistent shape stream and it will reactively update our local state. Our local PG Lite database will be updated to reflect the remote database. Let's try inserting a new value into the database. And won't you look at that almost instantly it was added here in our UI. Now the nice thing about this is that it is persisted locally. So we don't need to have the electric server running anymore. And now those are no longer running. But if we reload the page, we can see that the data is still there. It simply won't be able to connect anymore to the to the backend. Like I mentioned previously, you most likely don't want to connect to electric SQL directly and reading directly from the database for security reasons. You want to place these requests behind a proxy. We can also handle things like authentication. Suppose we have a to-do app. Of course, Lisa doesn't want Bob to be peeking at her secret to-dos. We need to make sure that Bob can only read the to-dos that he himself has created. And in this proxy server is also where you can handle mutations, such as inserting or updating data, where you can speak then directly to your Postgres database. So here's an example of how that proxy server can work. Here I'm using the HANO framework for my HTTP server. I'm just setting up a new HANO server. And then I define this my to do shape route, which will proxy the requests from the clients to the electric SQL server. Here we just set up the URL to our electric SQL backend. Then we copy over all of the search params if they are proper valid electric query params. We don't want to copy over any arbitrary query param, but those valid electric query parameters will be copied over into this URL. And then we set some of these search params, such as the table, we select the to-dos table, and we also read authorization header. In this case, you would probably want to actually authenticate with perhaps a, a JWT or a bearer token. Uh, but here we just pass in the user ID in the authorization header. And then we can set a where clause in our shape request. So we will be fetching shapes only where the user ID column is set to the specific user ID column that we have authorized. Then we simply replay this request, but we send it to the electric SQL server instead. And here we just delete the content encoding and content length header since those will be different for our response. And then we simply stream back the response that we get from Electric SQL. I've also set up a very basic post route for inserting a new to do into the database. So here we just send in the title as JSON and then we just insert into our table simply by connecting to this Postgres instance that we have running. So here's an example in the browser. We can see here that Lisa has these five to do's. But if I were to go over to Bob, we can see that he does not have any to do's. If I create two to do's for Bob and go back to Lisa, we can see that they are not the same. So how I set up this in Svelte is simply by using this authorization header that I mentioned previously. Of course, you want to have proper authorization and not just send in the arbitrary user ID. So that's all that I wanted to cover about Electric SQL. But of course, there is much more to learn and you can find out more by visiting their documentation. 
feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or opinions and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.